Hello everyone and welcome back to CS Mentor. Today we are going to talk about an important topic around journal submissions. After working hard on your research, collecting the results and writing the papers, at some point you are going to submit one of your papers to a journal and after a few months you are going to receive the decision on your submission and this decision will include the comments of the reviewers. In many circumstances you are going to need to provide a response to these comments and the way in which you approach this response highly impact the likelihood that your paper is going to be accepted or rejected. So in this video, we are going to discuss what are the good practices in order to respond to these comments. I'm going to also provide you a template that you can use in order to structure the response to the reviewer comments. And also I'm going to discuss some common mistakes and how to avoid them in writing the response. Before we start, I want to mention that about 80% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. If you find this content useful, it would be extremely helpful if you would please subscribe to the channel and like the video and potentially even share it with your colleagues so that more and more students can actually benefit from this content. Thank you very much. And now let's get into the content of the video. When you receive the decision on your journal submission, there could be several possible outcomes. And these are summarized over there. So these are accept, major revision, minor revision and reject. There are other few other ones that could happen, but they are definitely rare. So accept means that the paper can be accepted as it is. Reject, it means that the paper is not considered for submission because the quality is too low. While major revision and minor revision means that the paper needs to be revised and can still be considered for submission. In order to revise it, you need to address the reviewer comments. In the case of major revision, the paper will go back to the reviewers, which will see if you actually address satisfactorily their comments. While in the case of minor revision, it will be just the editor which sees if the reviewer comments have been addressed satisfactorily. But in both cases, it's extremely important to write the response properly in order to maximize the chances that your paper is going to be accepted. I'm going now to organize the process of responding to the reviewer comments in several steps. The first step is to organize the comments. So generally you receive a very long email containing the comments of the editor, the comments of each reviewer. Each of these comments contain a summary of the paper and there will be also other blah, blah, blah in general from the journal. Thank you very much for submitting to this journal, etc., etc., etc. So you really need to isolate the very important content, which are the comments of the editor and the comments of the reviewers. And then for each of these sections, you should isolate the comments individually so that you can address them one by one in your response. I'm linking a file in the description below that I have drafted. It's a LaTeX file that you can use to organize your response. And I hope you find it useful and please let me know what you think about it. Probably the most consequential decision that you're going to make is how to address these comments. So once you have identified them by one by one, you need to decide what you're going to do about it. You know, these comments may have a very large variety of requests. So some could be simply, you will need to uh, rewrite this section because it's not very clear. You may need to provide more details on this, but some other ones may be much more significant and may require much more work. For example, to do extra experiments, to do a compared with a certain specific solution in the literature that you have not considered. So what I really would like you to do is to look at these comments with an open mind and being flexible. So do not have an attitude that said, oh, the, um, this is too much. I, I'm just not going to do it. They, they, this is not a reasonable request. I'm not saying that this is never the case. There are some cases in which the requests are so much that it is not really feasible to do them in this paper, you could actually do another paper about that. But most of the time, if you can do something, it's much better to do it because this will maximize the likelihood that your paper is being accepted. There is nothing else that really pisses a reviewer off more than reading something like, we didn't think this comment was meaningful, so we didn't address it. So if you decide not to address a comment, you really need to come up with a very good reason for it that is actually convincing. Is convincing for the reviewer and even more is convincing for the editor that then will need to make the final decision. So you will need to have an open mind, you will need to have the willingness to do the extra work that is necessary to change your paper. Even if you have put a lot of work before, you need to now have the willingness 
to put extra work and change the behavior depending on the comments that you have received. So when you decide to address or not address a comment, well, you should think about your best interest because at the end you want the paper to be accepted. And think about what are the consequences and the trade-offs between how much extra work you're going to put on and how much this is going to impact the likelihood that the paper is going to be accepted. I already mentioned this, but I want to stress it again. Avoid negative attitudes towards these comments. It's the reviewer's job to provide you comments that are constructive and are meant to improve the paper. So do not have this negative attitude thinking, oh, they did not understood what I what I meant. This is already written there, why they didn't why they're asking me about it now. Oh, the reviewers are incompetent, they did, clearly are not experts in this field, so I should not consider what they're saying. So this is the typical attitude that will get your paper rejected and honestly it will not get you very far in the world of academia. I'm not saying that this never happens, that sometimes reviewers maybe are distracted, maybe they skip a part of the paper or maybe really they don't know very much that area. But it's still your job to write the paper so that people that are reasonably familiar with that topic can understand it. Now that you have a plan, make sure you execute it properly. Do not take shortcuts and if you see that the time that you have available to provide the response is running out generally it's like a month or three weeks well you can always ask for an extension and i would say in the case of journals this extension is generally granted in journals they're really not really clock ticking like for conferences that you need to provide the proceeding by a certain date if the publication of your paper is delayed well it's not big issue so if you think that the time is too short, you can always contact the editor and ask for an extension of the time to submit your paper. And they should be willing to provide that extension. And also make sure that as you respond to the comments, you also update the paper accordingly so that you are matching the response with the changes that you have done in the paper. The fourth step is to finally write the actual response to the reviewer comments. So what I want you to realize here is that it's not just important how much extra work you do, but it's also important how you describe in the response the work that you have done. So something that I really suggest is that in these comments, please be polite, be thankful, and be understanding towards the reviewers. It is very common to write a comment and say we are thankful to the reviewer for this comment because this helped us improving the paper, improving the quality of the paper, and improving the presentation of the paper, etc. So do not be afraid of being thankful. Of course, it doesn't need to sound overly thankful, so you should not thank them for everything that they say, but make sure to have a positive attitude so that the reviewer actually perceives that the comments that they have provided have been useful to improve the paper. Another suggestion that I have is to make sure that you are very detailed in the responses that you provide so that the reviewer can basically just read the response and have the feeling that whatever has been requested has actually been accomplished in the paper. Of course, it is also important that for each response that you provide, you provide a pointer to the paper where you actually have addressed that comment so that the reviewers can easily see that you are actually have done that. In some cases, I also like to highlight the changes in the paper in a different color so that it's easier to find them for the reviewers. Because if you just say, oh, this has been done in section three, let's say maybe section three is like two pages, it's hard to understand exactly in which point you have addressed this comment. Once everything is ready, the paper has been changed, the response has been written, well, it's time to submit the paper Make sure to attach the response, and I suggest also to attach the response first, so that the first thing that the editor and the reviewers will see is the actual response to the comments. And then you attach as a second file the paper that has been updated. Another suggestion is be ready to do this again. It's very, very common that a paper will go through a major revision, then a minor revision, and then finally be accepted. I would say this is the most common outcome when you submit a paper to a journal. So there might be another round of reviews, another round of comments, and you will need to address those again. And please follow the same approach, an open mind, willingness to work, and this will guarantee your success. So now good luck, and I hope your paper will be accepted. And if you find this useful, please let me know.